my blood talk fans. Today I have a video on how to properly perform a Vinam Pangju using butterfly method, starting from beginning to the end. Without further ado, let's get into it. The initial process is the same as straight needle collection because you still have to identify yourself, tell the patient who you are, what departments you are from, and the reasons you are there. For instance, my name is Peach. I'm a phlebotomist from laboratory, and I'm here to draw your blood for testing. After you have identified yourselves, you will have to identify the patients. Correct patient identification is key to patient care. Wrong identifications can lead to wrong diagnosis and wrong treatments. Ask the patient for their full names and date of birth or medical record number. Do not forget to check the patient armband if you are drawing an inpatient. Please watch how this phlebotomist perform the procedure. While you are watching, ask yourself this. Is this to do or not to do? And then we will go over each step together.
Now, let's discuss what's going on in the video and step on how to properly perform Vina Pengjur. First, prepare the Pabotama supply. Second, identify the drawing site by palpitating the patient vein. Look for a good bouncing vein, not what is visible by the eye. Start looking for the vein from antecubical site. Generally locate at the bend of the elbow. Third, sterilize the area by using alcohol pad in circular motions from inside to outside. If the patient is here for alcohol level testing, do not use alcohol pad. There are other agents that you can use, such as Coropep or iodine. Fourth, wait for the area to dry before puncture the vein. Do not blow nor wave because you will reintroduce bacteria to the drawing site. During the wait, you can prepare the gauze, bandage, and blood collection tube in the correct order of draw. Fifth, tighten the tourniquet 3 to 4 inch above the drawing site, making sure that the tail of the tourniquet is away from the site. Six, carefully handle the needle and aim at the identify vein. Keep your eye on the bevel. The bevel should be up and the pointed end of the needle is aiming at the vein. Seven, use your thumb of the opposite hand that you hold the needle to angle the vein by pulling the skin tuck and keep the vein in place. Don't pull it too tight that you will hurt the patient. Eight, bevel up and gently insert the needle into the patient's vein about 45 degrees. 9. For butterfly, you have two options. First, to let the needle go once you insert the needle and hold onto the hub as you exchange and fill up each tube. The other option is to keep holding the needle and the hub in a similar manner as a straight needle draw and using the other hand to exchange the tube. 10. As the blood is flowing, let the tourniquet go. Leave the tourniquet on for too long will cause hemoconcentrations and that will interfere with the test results. 11. Remove then gently invert the field tube a few times to prevent blood clot and I said gently because you do not want to cause blood to hemolyze. 12. Grab the next tube and repeat the process until you collected all the blood that you need. 13. When you draw the last tube, place a gauze on the needle and remove the needle. Do not press down on the gauze because you will be pressing on the needle that is still in the patient arm. You can also ask the patient to hold the gauze. I usually ask the patient to hold the gauze because that will reduce my risk of finger prick as I remove the needle from patient arm. 14. Once the needle is out of the patient arm, activate safety device immediately and throw the needle away in sharp containers. 15. Put bandage on patients. Then ask the patient to keep the pressure on the site for about 10 minutes.
16. Invert the tubes a few times and label the tube with patient's information. Generally, on the label, you should include your initial, date, and time of draw. As soon as you are done with labeling the tube, let the patient take a look and verify that the information is correct. While you are doing this, you will also keep an eye on the patient, making sure that the patient is doing okay and not fainting. 17. Yudin thanks the patient for his or her cooperation and exit or let the patient go. Thank you for staying with me until the end. What do you want to know next? Do you want to know more about blood bank? Chemistry? Microbiology? If you have any burning questions, please feel free to leave me a comment down below. Lastly, if you have not done so, please like, share, subscribe, and click the notification bell. I will see you in the next episode of Blood Talks. And as always, remember, your blood tells you the story of your health. Thanks for watching. Bye.